Sanan's condition, it seemed, was minute in scale. Regardless of their preparedness, war with the Imperial Army was steadily approaching, and the Shinsengumi was scrambling to meet their foe. Kondo and Hijikata each conducted recruitment within taverns and merchant centers throughout all of Edo to bolster their rapidly thinning ranks. Sanan, on the other hand, sat idly by in the compounds, seizing the opportunity to convince Hijikata of the Fury Corps' usefulness whenever the latter returned. On a temperate, modest spring morning, I had been sweeping leaves scattered along the floor within the hallway when Sanan was pleading with Hijikata. Oh boy, I'm gonna have to step in, aren't I? Hijikata, I must insist that you allow the Fury Corps to march alongside our men. Cast aside your doubts. Realize the threat posed to our enemy by our furies. If I may offer a suggestion, perhaps we should make an attempt to contact Kodo. Bring it back a second. Did I just hear you ask if we can reach out to Kodo? That's treason. The man's fighting on the other side. I've considered that position. However, during Tobofushimi, he took the initiative in suggesting cooperation. Perhaps there is room to negotiate. If perhaps we could procure some of his notes, then we could use them to strengthen our furies. Or even find a means of reversing the serum. So, what you're actually getting at is infiltrating enemy lines to snatch some intelligence. Glad to see you've kept your wits about you. I remember you mentioning his proposal back at Tobofushimi, but I'm hard-pressed to believe that he'd go through with his word. Therein lies our need for tactful negotiation. Everyone has their price, some say. Look, I'm not saying that your ideas don't have merit, but do you have any clue how many of our men were gutted by those goddamn furies in Kofu? You know who's responsible for that? Kodo. Even if... And it's a pretty big if I were to approve your mission. Heads would roll for us here. <clears throat> Hijikata stormed away flippantly, like he does, and Sanan eyed his back with gritted teeth. I hovered behind Sanan nervously, hesitant to speak my piece as he seethed in front of me. Fair enough. Um, Sanan? Ah, it's you. I hope you pardon my boorish display. It was unbecoming of me. Well, nice of you to apologize. That's quite alright. I'm just curious. Had you seriously intended on reaching out to my father? Oh, listening, were you? Don't worry. I have no intention of allying myself with him, nor had I invested any actual energy in doing so. I smiled warmly, but on the inside I was keenly aware of how pertinent furthering research on the Furies was to Sanon. His perseverance showed no signs of faltering, even in the opposing phase of Hijikata's ardent disapproval, a fact I found rather admirable. It's true. In fact, it wasn't unbecoming at all. Sanon was regaining purpose and was intent on showing it. That's true. He hasn't been like this since the before time, really. But father was the root cause of our recent struggles. To that end, I could empathize with Hijikata's point, especially when innocent lives were at stake. They demand that furies be complicit, that they deprive themselves of agency and meaning, and banish us to deteriorate from bloodlust. We are being condemned and exiled, and Hijikata questions me. <laughs> My days here are numbered. That's not how it is at all! I'm sure it's all just a big misunderstanding with Hijikata. Your kindness never ceases to amaze. However, you have no need to take pity on me. If approval proves difficult to obtain, then I must proceed accordingly. Wasted time falls like each grain of sand into the glass. Alright. The sabers continue to rattle, so to speak. I'm wondering... Like, are we going to break away from the Shinsengumi again and go on our own adventure? Or are we going to stick around? I don't really know. Could go either way at this point. 
I was feeling unwound on one particular day, which had been validated by Soma approaching me with some rather unfortunate news. Oh no! And he just disappeared. What? Sonon's missing? Indeed. Commander Hichikata made it clear that he was to remain in his quarters under probation. But when I visited his room, he was nowhere to be found. It wasn't just his room, either. He's vanished. Shimada is leading a search party to find him. In the meantime, we'll be searching for him as well. If you hear of anything, please alert us at once. Oh, okay. Before I could even respond, Soma and Namora dashed towards the front gate. My mind swirled with tireless worry. If Sanan disappeared, I wondered what happened. I sifted through possible explanations and couldn't help but lean upon one. My tepid heart tightened and I covered it with my hand. Shallow breath staggered from my mouth. I turned my head to find Hijikata and Heisuke leaving the compound with pensive expressions, and I couldn't help but call out to them. Hey, wait! Please! She's a room. Save it for later, kid. The last thing I need to deal with right now is a fly buzzing in my ear. Dang, dude! Man, Demon Commander is so harsh sometimes. Man. Hey, I heard about what happened. If you're planning on searching for Sanon, then I request that you allow me to join you. Not this time. Things might take a turn for the worse in a second. And if that's the case, I'm not sure it's best for you to be there. What do you mean, take a turn for the worse? I stared blankly at Heisuke, whose expression turned sheepish as he averted his gaze. Hijikata, perhaps frustrated by the whole affair, heaved a tender sigh. <sighs> Alright. If coming with us will stop your whining, then do it. Just don't blame me if you get upset. H hey Hijikata! What? You got a better idea? Either we let her see it for herself, or we'll never hear the end of it. <laughs> Ace K's face is just like, but... Enough arguing. My hair is getting grayer by the second. Let's go. Your hair is not getting gray. <laughs> Dude. As Hichikata kicked at the ground into a sprint, Ace K and I tailed him frantically. Oh no, they want to cut down my boy. I bet you've got your own suppositions, but... Trust my judgment on this one. I've been keeping tabs on him for a while now. Edo's dim streets were filled with a tense, placid chill. Faint creaks made me flinch as I walked beside Hijikata, who scoffed before quietly speaking to me. <laughs> Lately, Sanon's been on edge. More than usual, I suppose. You're reading too much into it. He's just been frustrated by his situation. That's all. That's not all that's been suspicious, though. I know we've gone over this, but... Sanon's been sneaking out of the compounds after dark again, and no one's figured out where. On top of that, remember the rumors of murder circulating around the city? Well... They've been coming in more and more frequently. Well, I think. Before I could offer him a rebuttal. Ah! I heard a blade cleaving through flesh, followed by the frightening sound of a bone cracking and a blood-curdling scream. What the heck was that? It's nearby. Down this alleyway. Quick, follow me! Oh no, not the alleyway. The alley was narrow, and I was careful not to trip haphazardly on thick pieces of lumber near our feet. I saw a murky, viscous liquid trickling towards me. It was dim, save for the hazy moonlight above us. In the back of the alley, covered in shadows, stood... Oh, what an unexpected surprise! A ronin, covered in deep lacerations, was lying in a thickening pool of fresh blood. A warrior without a domain or banner to serve or affiliate. Is something the matter, everyone? Sanan asks us coolly, flicking chunks of flesh from his bloody sword as if it were a casual affair. Ugh. Sanan! Stand back, 
back, Jizuru! What the fuck is going on, Sanon? You'd better have a damn good explanation. If I were to offer a reasonable defense, would you even bother listening? Leave that for me to decide! Both Hijikata and Heisuke swiftly drew out their swords, moving their feet into an offensive stance. Upon seeing that, I chose to... Hey, I'm here with- I'm here with my boy all the way, man. I believe in you, boo. Please stop! You stay out of this, understand me? Or else you'll have to deal with me next. Get the hell out of my way. No! I refuse! I leapt in front of Hijikata, raising my arms to block their path as I strained my voice, shouting, Go, girl! Wh why Why? Sanon is your friend! How could you possibly think of killing him without hearing him out? Wolf packs have to take care of their own. Something you'll never understand. Get the hell out of my way, Yukimura! <laughs> Does this amuse you, Sanon? <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's into his girl standing up for him, being like, halt everything. Oh, pay me no mind. Just hadn't anticipated for someone to back me up given the circumstances. Forgive me if I seem a little surprised. Hichikata and Sanon traded hateful glares. An electrifying tension filled the air, making it nearly impossible for me to draw breath. I assume that Ronin was a fury, maybe? Ah. <laughs> In the blink of an eye, I saw someone dart forward, though it hadn't been whom I was expecting. <laughs> what? Everyone's attention immediately shifted towards the source of the high-pitched laughter. Oh. To our bewilderment, the Ronin's flesh began to disintegrate like dust, scattering throughout the alley by the wind. I threw my hands up to cover my face. It blew against the back of my palms, and I realized that its texture was akin to ash. Wh what the hell is going on? What's happening here? You've just bore witness to every Fury's fate. Furies act on borrowed time. Activating their powers comes at the cost of one's own lifespan, if you catch my drift. Okay, so Sanon just knows this time around. This, of course, is obvious, but... One can only borrow so much time until death. In other words, it's only a matter of time until the rest of you abominations end up like that poor sucker. Whoa! I was not expecting it to be Alakiri. <laughs> Please tell me it was an Amagiri who was doing the high-pitched laughter and it was actually the wrong name just before he turned into Tess. <laughs> because I can't see Amagiri laughing like that. He just doesn't strike me as the type. <laughs> Good to see you, man. Amagiri! What are you doing here? Excellent work, Keisuke san Your diligence, as always, is duly appreciated. Really? Sanon's working with Amagiri? Why don't you guys work together? I want to be a part of this. As the demon, Kiyuju Amagiri, made his entrance, all of us were aghast, and I flinched in horror. Amagiri turned his eerie gaze away from Sanon and addressed us directly with a wry smirk. <laughs> I've got special orders all the way from the Imperial Army to hunt down Furies who have managed to escape from the laboratory's holding facility. Wily little beasts they are. They've been running rampant in Edo, painting the town red, so to speak. Luckily for myself, I coincidentally bumped into your friend and he agreed to cooperate with my mission. I offered information on the Furies to Kodo, since the Empire of Japan has taken an interest in his research. Sanon! You rat bastard! So on top of aiding those Imperial bastards, you're conspiring with a fucking demon? You misunderstand. 
They share an artist's taste, but the direction Kodo has been taking the Furies. So, we are temporarily joining for forces to halt his work. If you can, visualize the bigger picture. The enemy possesses intelligence on Furies that we require. I will admit, however, that I have acted without your consent. If you must punish me, Commander Hijikata, then I have no choice but to accept. You got that right. When we return to the compounds, you're going to spill everything to me. Everything! It was a huge relief for Sanon to prove that he wasn't the culprit of the swath of murders plaguing Edo. Thank you. At the same time, however, my opinion of Sanon's intentions was clouded by his secret collusion. Well then, I finished my business here, so I'll be off now. Before I go, I wanted to say that I hope none of you do anything you'll come to regret. <laughs> oh. Okay, thanks for that clear as mud statement, Amagiri. Before any of us could stop and ask him to clarify, Amagiri vanished like mist into thin air, leaving us dumbfounded by his cryptic message. For a brief moment, I stood still, silently deliberating what this could mean for myself, and for Sanon. Hmm. How very interesting. Regardless of whether or not Sanon was acting with the Shinsengumi's goals in mind, his connection with Amagiri was conspicuous, if not outright treasonous. It was in clear violation of the rules of conduct, punishable only by seppuku, but since Sanon was technically already dead, it was a hollow sentence. Ultimately, the Shinsengumi strictly ordered Sanon to remain in probation under house arrest. Not again, this poor guy. Meanwhile, the Shinsengumi had been preoccupied with their next course of action. Because Edo had surrendered to an armistice with the Imperial Army, Remaining within the city was no longer a sustainable option for the Shinsengumi. The Shinsengumi decided once more to relocate, this time to the city of Aizu, under the jurisdiction of Lord Katamori Matsudaira, to mobilize against the Imperials. On the night before we were ordered to leave Edo, I was nestled in my futon, wide awake with my thoughts. Twilight was at its peak, enveloping our compounds in an impenetrable darkness. As fatigued as I had felt, shutting my eyes for longer than a minute was proving to be quite the task. I took deep breaths, attempting to calm my heart's heavy rhythm, and finally drifted to sleep. In my dream, a visitor slinked into my room quietly. Who do we know that likes to slink and slither in every s-word you can think of? It was Sanon wearing a gentle, affectionate smile with a melancholy twinkle in his tired eyes. Um, yes? <laughs> Where is this going to lead? Yukimura. Oh! This has got to be a dream. Surely. Or I've died. Sa? None? W was this real? Hi. Ah, I hadn't meant to disturb your slumber. <laughs> Even in your sleep, your skin glistens. Oh? <laughs> Sorry, he's so close to her. <laughs> I'm just like screaming. I'm like trying to hold the scream in my head of "Oh my god!" And I'm like, mm. <laughs> I'm really liking Son on CG so far. They are fire. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna have a sip of water to calm myself down. Um. <clears throat> All right, we can do this. I think. Warmth trickled down my scalp as he patted my head. He ran his fingers softly through my hair, tickling my head though I had no energy to react. You may be confused as to why I am here, and the truth is, I wanted to give you my thanks. From the moment of our arrival in Edo, 
Your smile and disposition have given me strength and poise. When everyone chose to abandon my side, only you sought to keep your faith in me. Although, perhaps I am somewhat undeserving of your adoration. Wh why? I felt like calling out to him, asking him, but... Even in my dream, I was situated as a passenger, unable to move my hands or lips in response. This is so weird. It's like she's half asleep, half awake, can't quite wake up, can't quite fall asleep. It's, it's really weird. <laughs> she's a real... That's not all. The water of life, to me, was a wondrous godsend. But in your wisdom, you begged me not drink it. Uh, did I skip? I just want to make sure I didn't skip. No, okay. Good. In my moment of weakness, I craved the taste of blood. Yet you offered yourself to me fearlessly. Such a brave, foolish soul. Forgive me if I sound presumptuous in mentioning this, but... If you really are as selfless as you seem, then I can only attribute the cause to one logical conclusion. I'm beginning to believe that you are developing feelings for me, tempted by my alluring veneer. <laughs> Dang, this dude thinks he's like the cat's whiskers, doesn't he? <laughs> I mean, he's right, but it's just so funny how he just comes to me. It's like, I mean, I can only assume you fell in love with all of this. Because, I mean, who wouldn't? <laughs> I'm going to die before I get through this whole route. It's too much for me. Ugh. By this point, Sanan's face is... Uh, face, <laughs> yes, he, had, he suddenly had more than one face. Sanan's face was inches from mine. Aw, that is so sweet, though. Mm. Sanan pressed his supple lips against my forehead, igniting a flame deep in the pit of my chest. For a dream, the sensation was unmistakably real, covering me from head to toe in sweet bliss. If this evening proved to be an actual dream, then I never wanted to awake from it. <laughs> I suppose waiting for your answer is a futile effort. All that I covet is but a ghost of a thought. The dead have no place amongst the living. Such is the way of the world. He spoke in a hushed tone and backed away from me. Please, please don't go! My entire body yearned for the closeness of his skin but I could neither open my eyes nor lift a finger. If ever wishes could become reality, then I would hold you close, wrapping you in my arms until my flesh turned to dust. However, I must first complete a mission, one that I cannot complete while in the Shinsengumi's custody. So, farewell. Oh, he came to say goodbye. <laughs> Cause I was like, surely me standing up for him wasn't like enough for him to, to break house arrest to come and, and just thank me for that. But it was because he's like, I actually, like the one person who's helped me is this girl who he has obviously developed feelings for and it's like she might have two drat i can't do anything about it because i gotta do this thing and so he says goodbye to her while she's asleep and it like has this big confession moment thing oh my god <sighs> sanan's working his way to number one i'm just saying <laughs> He's putting in some effort here. I'm like, dang. Ooh, got an ache in my heart. All you could do is triple dot, girl. He left, man. We gotta go find our boy. 
I awoke in a daze, untied by a heavy heart and a distracted mind. For some odd, inexplicable reason, tears began to stream down my cheeks. I wiped them softly and made my way to Sanon's quarters. But, as I had suspected, he was nowhere to be found. That must have been real. Memory of his farewell came to me like deja vu, and I found a neatly folded kimono beside his satin futon, but nothing else. No research notes, no tomes, no evidence of his stay. Most of all, the man whom I wanted to see most. The birds chirp, 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 chirp. Well, I'm sure Toshi burst a freaking blood vessel <laughs> after that. But I'm like, there's no way you're going to keep this guy in under house arrest. There's no way, man. Ah, oh, that scene. That scene was so good, though. Oh my god. That was just chapter two. <sighs> All right. Well, let's see. Chapter three. Where are we at with you, boy? That was an 80% confession we had. All right. Take it. Cries of foul play dogged the Shinsengumi after their infamous Colonel Keisuke Sanon deserted them. He was immediately branded as a traitor. Aside from Heisuke, the rest of the Fury Corps had emptied from their rooms as well, adding fuel to the chaotic rumors catching flame within the Shinsengumi. Interesting. So he took the whole Fury Corps with him. I mean, might as well. They were being treated like crap. Sanon, I had assumed, somehow convinced the rest of his men to accompany him, and off they went. Initial plan surfaced to organize a search party with the intent of doling justice and demanding that Sanon answer for his perceived crimes, but... Because the Shinsengumi had been putting the majority of their resources into leaving for Aizu, the plans were quickly abandoned. Nothing ultimately came of Sanon's disappearance, save for the internal smearing of his good name. I, of course, made my case against doing so. Sanon was incapable of the accusations flung at him. He was too logical, too loyal to be susceptible to the temptation of treason, so there had to be a reason. However, for as long as he was absent, there was no way for him to defend himself, and subsequently my well-intentioned belief fell on deaf ears. In the end, the Shinsengumi permitted me to leave after I made a passionate case for my resignation. Dang, girl's like, I can't listen to you, I'll smear this boy's name anymore, I wanna go. <laughs> wow, she just goes on her own? Do you go on your own, Chizaru? I fled to my house in Edo in order to regroup myself. Both Hijikata and Heisuke expressed their disapproval in my request, making my departure acrimonious to some degree, but I had to remain steadfast in Edo. A few lonely days passed in the blink of an eye. Good job, girl. Wow! She's not going to Aizu. Okay. <sighs> I guess finding someone who doesn't want to be found is more difficult than I anticipated. I spent each day wandering around Edo, hoping to escape the confines of Yukimura Clinic, which hosted its own set of complex, unresolved feelings for me. By dusk, my legs would cramp, and I became listless, realizing how futile searching for Sanon was turning out to be. How easily the bitter heart grows weary. You should probably be searching at night. It was better than doing nothing, I suppose. Maybe just a little bit longer today. I lost myself in the busy noise of the city, dragging my feet in rebellion as I fought the urge to collapse. There was nothing for me here in Edo. No father, no Sanon, not a single member of the Shinsengumi left. So much time had passed since I was last truly alone that I hadn't the faintest idea what to do with myself. 